Looking for something meaningful and life-changing to help you move through the challenges of life? Then join Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church of Gastonia for an inspirational message prepared just for you. They were singing earlier about his mercies day after day, and then that he's a keeper. I got to bless him for the mercies because I recognize that without the mercies of God, man, you're just going to write me off. <laughs> but I thank God that he's a preservative that's been added to my life. My, my, my. He can keep you from now throughout all eternity. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his keeping ability shall always be. Aren't you glad about that this morning? Ephesians 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Father, it's in the name of Jesus that we pray this morning that you direct our thoughts, our words, and even the outcome and the impact of your word. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you move me out of the way. Usher in your presence. Usher in your power. And let God, my words, surrender to your will. And Father, I pray that the word will find your people and that, Father, your word will strengthen, guide, and lead and set free. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. I wonder, is there anybody in here this morning who has ever questioned whether God really accepts you. I know you're in church. I know you're in worship. But the Holy Spirit said that there are some people who are struggling with the question, does God really accept me? And that's what I want to begin, at least introduce this morning, by raising the question, does God accept me. That's what I want to talk about. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh good neighbor, let's help Bishop talk about, does God really accept me? Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Little story that we grew up reading back in the first or the second grade and the story was are you my mother? Y'all remember that? It's an old classic, and it's, it's about this mother bird, and the mother bird is sitting on her precious egg, and as the egg begins to, or the chick inside begins to jump around, the mother uh, senses that uh, the time for the baby bird to hatch uh, is very near. So the mother bird decided... Uh, to go search for some food so that when the baby bird is hatched, she will have a worm to put directly in the baby's mouth. And while the mother had flown away to find food, the baby bird hatches, and, and the baby bird desperately looks around for his mother. Something on the inside told uh, the bird that, uh, that you have a mother, but she did not, he did not see his mother when he was hatched. And after looking around the nest, and, and the mother was nowhere in sight. 
what in the world is the little poor baby bird to do? So he decides to take a journey and he left the nest uh, in search for his mother. He meets a kitten along the way. He meets a hen along the way. He meets a dog and, and a cow. And he asks each, are you my mother? And uh, he uh, goes on and they each, to his disappointment, say, no, we are not your mother. And he continues the journey and he finds an old broken down car and he finds a boat and he sees a plane and he asks, are you my mother? And, and then he comes to a large bulldozer and, and none of those was his mother. And, and so the baby was running from this big snort he thought it was. It was a bulldozer and he found himself on the front of the bulldozer. This big machine lifted the baby up in the air and began to move out and the bulldozer lifted the bird and placed him right back in the nest uh, that he had hatched from. And, and the mother returns bringing food. And, and she said to the baby bird, do you know who I am? And the baby bird said, are you my mother? And uh, the mother bird said, I am your mother. And they live happily ever after. Now, when we go back and look behind this seemingly cute little way that the baby bird asked so many, are you my mother, we need to make sure that we get a deeper revelation of just what was taking place. Because what the baby really was searching for was acceptance. Somebody say acceptance. Because acceptance is one of our greatest needs and, and one of the things that humans need most and that is acceptance because understand that when I find acceptance it liberates everything that is in me and, and, and only when I am loved in that deep uh, sense of complete acceptance can I really become uh, myself. You got to understand that, uh, that every, every human uh, craves being accepted and, and uh, being accepted for who he or she is. Nothing in life has such a lasting and or fatal effect on us as the experience of not uh, completely being accepted. When I am not accepted, uh, then I sense that something is broken on the inside of me. When I am not accepted, uh, I might feel like a nobody. I cannot come to a fulfillment because an accepted person is a happy person because he has opened up because he now can grow. And when you think about it, although it was innocent that uh, this bird went on the search, he experienced what humans really hate, and that is the opposite of acceptance, which is rejection. Anybody ever experienced some rejection in your life? I suspect that there are some people, even under the sound of my voice today, uh, who have brought a sense of uh, rejection, and, and you have brought the scars and the wounds and the feeling of being rejected because nobody enjoys rejection. I believe that uh, at some point all of us have felt rejection. There is pain and there is misery that is associated with rejection. Bob Sorge says that our world is filled with rejection. Babies are unwanted by mothers, and children are assaulted and abused by parents. People curse and break on each other. People are marked, uh, mocked by their physical or their uh, mental qualities, and, and others are robbed and raped and swindled and friends drop friends and, and divorce rips families apart and, and the list goes on and on and on of all of the experiences that we have in this world where we sense and feel rejected. Rejected uh, can be major and uh, a rejection can also be minor. 
Uh, you weren't chosen to play on the school sports team. And you had friends that went out and they made it. And, and, and you were not uh, selected for the squad. You got stood up on a date. Or, or maybe you uh, don't seem to be able to get a date. Or maybe you got laid off for no good reason. And, and they kept everybody else. And it seems like they laid you off. Uh, rejection can leave a lasting scar. And the reality is that all human relationships are accompanied by the risk of rejection. That anytime we enter into any relationship, whether it's a, a friendship or even in family, and, and when we are going to work and we have associates and, 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 and in church and, and every place that we experience life and we enter into relationships, uh, there is the risk of somebody rejecting us. It may have started early in school. Maybe you had to wear uh, some hand-me-downs and, and you felt like that the, the, the kids laughed at you and, and maybe they laughed at you because you were of a different race and, and maybe you were a minority in a certain group. You, you, maybe you had a physical defect so uh, they picked on you and, and the most damaging is when a child perceives it from the parent. Many times it, uh, it is uh, not physically demonstrated. Parents often remind children of how they have uh, shelter, food, and clothes, but they don't give of themselves, making uh, the young person feel rejected. They are never uh, satisfied seemingly with uh, the child. If the child has a low grade and, and they, they, they are not satisfied and the child brings it up and they're still not satisfied and when they bring it to the top place, then uh, they still say, well, you should have been doing it all along and it causes them to feel a sense of rejection. The reason that rejection is so painful is that there is something built within us, as I said, uh, that, that really desires to be accepted. Don't let people fool you when they, uh, when they say that uh, I don't need anybody's acceptance and oh, I don't need anybody's love. What, what they're really doing is that they are trying to protect themselves from further rejection because they know that I've been in a relationship, I've been in a friendship, even in a family, even in a church connection where I sensed that I was rejected. And, and so I will now declare that I don't need anybody outside of me, but what the reality is that they are trying to be protected uh, from the future or further rejection because all of us have a deep desire for acceptance. Now understand, understand that although there is an inner desire for acceptance, uh, it can really be dangerous because just as the bird went searching and asking uh, and looking for his mother, he was really looking for acceptance and at any of those places, uh, he could have settled in all the other animals or all the other things had to do was say, listen, I'm not your mother, but you can hang out right here. Isn't that right? And the bird could have found acceptance in the wrong place, all because of trying to cover the pain of feeling a rejected. And I got to warn somebody this morning, you be careful to what you connect when you feel rejected. Tell your neighbor, you got to be careful that when you feel rejection in your life, when you feel like that you have not been accepted in your life, you got to be careful to where you turn. You got to be careful to where you go because you can end up in some places uh, that were never suitable for you and the place that has nothing to do with your destiny all because you're trying to be accepted. There are many people who have been led to wrong places because all they were looking for was acceptance. Girls have found bad relationships and ended up in a mess, ended up in trouble, ended up in a bad situation, all because they just wanted to find somebody that would accept them. Guys turn to gangs and street corners and end up in jail and sometimes are dead, all because uh, they just wanted to find acceptance. When there is 
the sense of feeling rejected, uh, even as a young person, it tends to follow you into your adult life. You end up making the same mistakes over and over uh, because you just wanted acceptance and, and whatever was necessary, whatever you had to do, uh, you would find acceptance and even with people that meant you no good, even in circles uh, that were not there to help your destiny, but all because you wanted to feel accepted. Whenever you feel rejected, the desire for acceptance is so great that it can cause you to do what you would not ordinarily do. Can I get somebody? I'm talking to somebody. Can I testify? Maybe I'm just talking to me. But if anybody else can testify uh, that in my life uh, that I have sensed some rejection and I felt uh, the need for acceptance that was so great and that it would cause you to do or say or go somewhere and participate in what you ordinarily wouldn't just so you could be accepted. That I didn't grow up, yeah, trying to uh, drink. My parents didn't drink, didn't have drink and all that stuff in the house and all. Um, but I remember uh, trying to go up on the block, on the corner, uh, and try to hang out with the guys that, uh, you know, they were a few years older than I was. And, and uh, they were up there drinking MD-2020 and Roma Rocket. Y'all don't know if they drink all that stuff now. They got some new stuff now. But, uh, yeah, and so we would try to ease up that they would be smoking the marijuana and, and hollering at the girl. And we would try to slip over there, a uh, few of my uh, buddies, and we try to stand around with them now, just, just so it looked like, you know, we were in the groove too, you know. And we weren't with them, but we were just trying to look like we were a part so we could be accepted. And every now and then, uh, they would say, come over and, and take a drink. Come over and take a hit. And there we were, knowing that that was not our destiny, knowing that was not our upbringing. But just so we could feel accepted, uh, we over there drinking something that we might my God, it was the nastiest thing in the world. My God, it, uh, it, and Roma Rocket, my God, would send you somewhere that you didn't want to go and keep you longer than you wanted to stay and cost you more than you wanted to pay, but just to feel accepted. So you got to understand, you understand uh, that, uh, uh, that young people would go against their parents. You, you say things you know uh, are wrong. You go places you know you shouldn't. And you get involved with people you know you shouldn't. Your dress is affected. Your habits are affected. And you find yourself in situations that on the inside you really don't feel good about. But to be accepted, I'm hanging. Come on, you've been, you've been going some places and involved with some stuff that you don't even like. But just to be accepted just to feel like I'm in with the crowd. And I, I know this thing, it, you almost detest it. It almost uh, it just causes you to, to regurgitate, but just to still feel like I'm accepted. And have you ever seen this? That sometimes you would go and hang with people and try to be a part of being accepted, and you know the people don't even care about you. Huh? Like, why in the world am I trying to be up in a crowd, uh, trying to hang with somebody uh, that's supposed to be my friend and trying to hook my girlfriend up with somebody else, but yet I find myself trying to hang to be accepted. I wish I had two or three people in here. Huh? Uh, you see, because you want to be accepted, the reality is that you will do all of that because the opinion of others uh, becomes more important than your own sense of who you are. I wish I had two or three people. Huh? So you got to understand that, uh, that, uh, uh, that you, 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 you want to be accepted so badly that what they think means more uh, than what you feel about you. And we have all probably uh, regretted something or suffered something all because what somebody else felt was important. How many people have gotten in trouble? How many people have gone to make time? How many people have gotten in trouble uh, in the school with the principal? How many people uh, who have gotten in trouble in the culture because uh, somebody else's opinion was uh, greater than yours and you decided you were going to go and do what they said do only to find out you were in trouble. It causes you to lose your own sense of worth. Although we all desire to be accepted, nobody else's opinion about us should cause us to do what we ought not do. I wish I had two or three people. 
when everybody else's opinion of you becomes more important than your own, you then reject yourself. And the truth is there are a whole lot of people that are experiencing this morning self-rejection. They come into sanctuaries, they are listening by way of streaming, and the reality is that you are experiencing self-rejection. When other people's feeling and, and what they view and what they have said and how they feel and how they make you feel and whether they accept you or not, or whenever you feel it and theirs is more important than yours, you have moved into the area of self-rejection. And can I tell somebody uh, this morning uh, that uh, whenever uh, you are a person who's experiencing uh, self-rejection, when a person rejects self, it now begins to affect every other relationship you have. Married couples have problems because one or the other is experiencing rejecting of self. A mother and a father cannot effectively parent because there is self-rejection. Uh, you don't really have good friendships and, and uh, maybe there's some self-rejection going on. You, you try to get along with co-workers and you don't seem to be able to. Maybe there's some self-rejection. You, you try to date and you never get off the ground. Maybe there's some self-rejection. Even you try to have good relationships uh, in the kingdom, but you can't. Maybe there's some self-rejection. And Jesus said, you got to love your neighbor as you love yourself, but you can't love anybody correctly if you reject yourself. I don't have anybody. Because whenever you reject yourself, you end up hating yourself, and you take it out on everybody, and you blame everybody else, and, and you can't connect, and you can't love, you can't outreach to anybody else because you really don't love yourself. And that's why we're in a culture that doesn't mind killing each other. Uh, that's why young guys uh, have uh, black on black crime and shooting each other because they really don't like each other themselves and when I don't like me and I see somebody that looks like me I don't mind taking his life I wish I could get somebody and a whole lot of people want relationship want connection but they have rejected themselves and since they have rejected themselves they don't feel like they can connect with anybody else because they don't feel they're worthy they don't even like me and if I don't like me my God I don't expect you to be able to like me so whenever you tell me I love you and when you tell Tell me that I appreciate I don't believe it because I'm full of self-rejection because I have a bend toward rejection. When you don't know acceptance, it makes it hard to really believe that you are even accepted by God. Huh? Knowing the acceptance of God is the only way for healing from rejection. So if we, if we have dealt with this rejection acceptance issue, then the question this morning becomes, does God really accept me? Huh? Uh, does God really accept me? Or do I have to do something to make him uh, accept me and that's the kind of mindset uh, that we get uh, because we understand that we live in a performance based uh, culture where uh, my God I, I've got to do something uh, to, to, to cause you to like me I, I've got to do something to win your acceptance I, I got to buy you something I got to take you somewhere I got to treat you a certain way for you to uh, accept me and so because that's the kind of mindset uh, that we have in the culture we start seeing God God uh, in through the same eyes and so I don't believe that God uh, can really accept me so I find myself trying to be acceptable to God by what I perform and what I do and as long as I'm doing well I feel like God accepts me but the moment I mess up and the devil gets in my ear because the Bible said that Satan is the accuser of the brethren and as soon as I make a mistake as soon as I sin as soon as I get off the course uh, then he begins to tell me see there you don't have anything God can't love you. Look at you. Look at you. You messed up. You said you were saved. I told you you weren't saved. I told you you were just going through the game. And so you find yourself then and trying to do something else that's going to be better than what you did before so that God would accept you again. And you get on this merry-go-round and you get on this circle and you find yourself frustrated, aggravated, and burned out because I am on a performance-based mindset that I got to do something for God to accept me because I cannot stand rejection. Rejection. The reason we ask that question is because we wonder 
really am I good enough? Because I have, my God, when I've been rejected, I've tried. You see, you got to do something to get into a fraternity. You got to do something to get into a frat. You got to do something to get on the team. You got to do something to be, uh, to enter into a club. You got to enter, you got to do something to, to enter into this society and that society and this group and that group. And whenever I, I, I can't, if, if I don't have certain grades, I can't get into this academic uh, society. And I've got, it's always performance. Performance makes me feel that I got to do something. And if I can't get there, maybe I'm not good enough. And if I'm not good enough to be accepted and because I've been rejected in other places, maybe God feels the same way about me. The reality is every religion, no matter the religion, is man's practice and his effort of seeking to be accepted by God. And I want to warn us, and I'll talk about this, I believe, a little later, that, that whenever we get on this performance-based uh, mindset in our relationship with God, if we aren't careful, we move from relationship to the spirit of religion. And we got to tear down the spirit of religion in the body of Christ because the spirit of religion is what is destroying the church, destroying people. But that's for another message. But it, this sets up rejection and acceptance sets up the spirit of religion. I got I to gotta do something, I got to do something. But the text says, Paul says, and, and, and I'm just about done. Paul says uh, that uh, uh, as he was talking about the wonderful things that, uh, that belong to believers uh, over in the book of Ephesians, he must have run into a congregation of people uh, that were dealing with rejection issues. We're, we're dealing with the fact that how can I really uh, be accepted by God because I know me. I know the me that y'all don't know. And you know the you that we don't know. And since we know the standard of God, since we know the expectation of God, and I know me and you know you, how then can I be accepted by God? So Paul was dealing with it. And Paul said, I want you to understand now. He says in verse number three, uh, blessed be God. He was worshiping God, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus, uh, who was blessed, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Notice now, verse four, he said, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Can I tell somebody this morning that God is a providential God? In other words, God is able uh, to, 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 before he even created anything, just in his being, he had the capacity to look throughout all eternity, and he knew that I'm going to create man, and man is going to mess up, uh, but I'm going to already provide a solution before I ever create man. God know, he knew the mess you were going to make. He knew the things you were going to do. He knew your proclivities. He knew your desires. He knew your shortcomings, and yet he still chose you. I wish I could get somebody. Do you understand that Paul said, says and that God had a, a choice and that there was a decision to make. It, it wasn't automatic. It wasn't automatic. But he said he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him. And that's where the problem comes is that I know and that I'm not without blame. I know that I'm not always holy. I know that no good thing dwells in my flesh. So I got issues then that if he chose me, he's talking about the choosing of the one who is holy and blameless. And you know you're not holy and blameless. And the the enemy is continuously condemning you and telling you all that you're not and then he tells you that God has rejected you and so you begin to believe it and even when you come to church and even there are people serving in ministry there are people who are coming to worship don't believe that they are really accepted by God isn't that something that, that, that we are worshiping a God who is uh, holy, supernatural, and we are trying to be under him, and we don't even believe that he accepts us. Hmm? But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he chose you. He chose you. And listen, I told the church this morning, I don't even know if I would have chosen me. Huh? 
Come on, the reality is when you look at you, sometimes, and that's where the self-rejection comes in because we begin uh, to make these comparisons and, and all these evaluations and, and we begin to look at what God is not looking at. He said, I chose you. I made a conscious decision that I'm still going to pick you. I know what you're going to do. I know that I'm going to pick you up and there's going to be a time that you're going to fall back down, but I still chose you. What we need to do now is choose to be chosen. I can't get anybody in here. See, if you don't choose to be chosen, uh, then you're going to live in rejection and you're going to blame it on God, but it's not going to be from God because God said, I chose you before you messed up. Somebody said, I choose to be chosen. Huh? And, then, and then Paul says, he says not only that, he says, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Can I tell you, you can't sing good enough, well enough? Can I tell you, you can't usher well enough? Can I tell you, you can't play an instrument well enough? Can I tell you, you can't preach well enough? You can't know enough scriptures? You can't know enough of, of, of all of the antics in the body of Christ well enough for God to choose you? It is not by your works. It is not by your performance. It is not by how many times you have repeated the 23rd Psalm. It is not whether or not you can speak verbatim all of the word. It is not by the fact that that you have read the Bible from beginning to the end. It is not based upon any of those things. It's based on his good pleasure. Huh? Somebody say it was his good pleasure. It was his decision. It was because of his goodness, his nature, his righteousness, his commitment, his faithfulness. And it had nothing to do with me because I was not even uh, exi in existence when he chose to choose us. And it was out of his good pleasure. So you can take yourself and the pressure off of you. You will never do enough to win the acceptance of God. Then he said, he said in verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us, he made us accepted in the beloved. In other words, he said, you are accepted by God. That means that you ought to be highly favored. You ought to have honor and blessings. We are accepted in the beloved. And no matter what kind of rejection you may have experienced, uh, you are in Christ Jesus accepted. Can you look on either side of you and say, I don't care how bad you messed up, you're still accepted. See, we get this confused with that, that we have a license to do wrong. No, no, no. Uh, nobody's giving you a license to do wrong. He expects us to do well, but he also knows that we are of a fallen nature. And that, and that there, there is nothing that we can do outside of him drawing us to do well. And so he has already compensated. And it is not in you, but it is in the grace uh, that comes through Christ Jesus. Do I have anybody? Turn over very quickly to Romans chapter number 5. And Romans chapter number 5 and verse number 1 said, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something, and that you are not a reject. I don't care how much reefer you've been smoking. I don't care, I don't care where you've been laying. I don't care who rejected you. Come on, I don't care how you have depreciated yourself. God says, I have already accepted you. Now, I, I need for you to do better. I need for you to conform to the word. I need for you to walk uprightly. I need for you to grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But you can't come to enough church school classes to win my approval. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, stop trying, stop trying. Let's just go on and be so we can enjoy the journey because too many people are striving and struggling and trying to be good enough. And since man has rejected you, you think God is rejecting you as well. But I just stopped to encourage some people this morning who have been dealing with a sense of rejection uh, that God, the Bible says, even in Romans uh, there, he says that God commended uh, his love to us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ 
Christ died for the ungodly. And it's because of what Christ has done in going through with the Calvary experience that God does not look toward us and see us uh, in the way that he used to see us. But now when he sees us, he sees us covered by Jesus Christ so that therefore he accepts us because he accepted what Jesus Christ did at Calvary when Jesus came and he became he who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God so when Paul says and that even before the foundation of the world uh, that uh, we should be holy and without blame before him in love it had nothing to do with you trying to make yourself holy it had nothing to do with what color clothes you put on it had nothing to do with whether you wore makeup or not it had nothing to do uh, with whether or not uh, you uh, had all of these physical things that were going on. It had to do with the one who knew no sin, who became sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God. I'm not the righteousness of God because I've crossed every T and dotted every I. I'm not the righteousness of God and because I have not sinned and come short of the glory of God. I am the righteousness of God because God decided that sin had to be paid and Jesus paid the price and since Jesus paid the price God said I'm satisfied now and anybody that comes in with Jesus they are all right with God do I have anybody in here is there anybody here I came to crucify rejection this morning I came to crucify and to slay the spirit that has been dragging you down and keeping you from being fulfilled and keeping you from walking uprightly with God and keeping you from knowing and who you are and I'm not glorifying sin no I'm not glorifying unrighteousness uh, but he said that you you got to recognize that you've been saved by grace through faith and that it is not of yourself. It is a gift lest you would boast about it. I'm glad that it's a gift. Aren't you glad that it's a gift? I'm glad that it's a gift. I'm glad that he put it on equal terms and because there's some folk that may have gotten to it uh, a little better than I could. There's some people that have a little better gift than I have and they would may, and may be able to get there. If they had to pay for it, some people had more money than other people, but he said it's a gift. You can't boast in it. The only thing you can boast in is Christ. So I want to know, I want to know this morning, Maybe you've struggled with the acceptance rejection issue. You, you, you look like you're fine. You look like everything's well. But the reality is, day in and day out, you deal with am I good enough? Do I measure up? Because we have we have this thing that the psychologists call social compassion. When I begin to compare up, I start looking at people whose life seems better than mine. I start looking at people who seem holy, who seem to have it all together. They know how to carry their fire. They, they, they got a certain look on their face. I start comparing myself to them. They know how to. And, I, and they they made more Bible studies than I have. They they pay tithe longer than I have, and 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 they they worship, and their worship seems so. Pure. And I begin to compare myself, and it doesn't seem like I'm good enough. It doesn't seem like that God will accept me. And then we begin to compare down. We start looking at that person that uh, that I seem to be better than, and 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 we start we start feeling a certain way based on the fact that that. But the truth is that God is the standard. God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Don't equate the rejection of humanity with the rejection of God. Because we have an innate desire for acceptance. It's inherent in man. But be careful where you find it. And be careful where you turn to see seek it in things just like that bird. Are you on it? Are you the one who is supposed to accept me? 
See, to accept the person does not mean that I deny his defects, that I gloss over them or try to explain them away. Neither does acceptance mean to say that everything the person does is beautiful and fine. It's just the opposite. When I deny the defects of the person, then I certainly do not accept them. I have not touched the depth of that person. Only when I accept a person truly face his defects. Y'all get that? Huh? Acceptance means that I never give a person the feeling that he does not count. Not to expect anything from a person is essentially killing that person. And so God says that even with your flaws, even with the stuff you did yesterday, last week, greatness in you despite what the enemy might say and how he might mistreat it. I, I, I sense that somebody is dealing with all the rejections that you have had. And they, have, they have sort of piled up in a big heap. And you have even said to Looking for dynamic worship, inspirational teaching, and a friendly atmosphere? You can visit us on Sundays at 221 West Bradley Street in Gastonia, North Carolina. For more information about our ministry, you can call 704-865-9016. To order your personal copy of today's message or any other broadcast, please call 704-865-9016 and indicate the broadcast date. Or you can just visit us online at www.friendshipgastonia.com. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast with Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church. Make sure you join us next week at the same time. And remember, let God take control and let the Spirit flow.